Okay, let's get back to uh, this. So this is the uh, second part of the video tutorial for uh, worksheet number one. Uh, physics, again, physics for MDI, where is my, just so that we have the title here, in case somebody uh, looks at this, uh, this from uh, somewhere else. This is physics for uh, medical diagnostic imaging. Uh, this is tutorial number one. And uh, we're doing worksheet on uh, electrostatic uh, forces and electrostatic potential and all of these uh, wonderful things that we're going to need in order to understand the concept of imaging and the concept of uh, X-ray production. So it's very, very important uh, concepts that we need to understand in order to understand all of the uh, basic physics behind uh, uh, electrostatic. So anyway, the X-ray, uh, how they work and how they, they're produced and uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, okay, so now we're coming back to question number six. Question number six says that you have an electron with has a charge, we know the charge electron, and it moves along a perpendicular path, uh, path to the direction of a uniform magnetic uh, electric static field, which is equal to that. How much work is done on the electron as it moves 15 uh, centimeters? Okay, now, uh, so to draw this, this is my electrostatic field, okay? This is the direction. He just told me that it's, and by the way, whenever we have a uniform uh, field, one way of drawing that is by drawing it uh, parallel lines with the distance between the lines is, the, is equal, just to indicate that it's a uniform, uh, uniform electrostatic field. And he told me that the electron is moving perpendicular in this direction. So this is the direction of the velocity of the electron. And then if you recall from physics one, we took that the uh, work is defined as F dotted with D as a scalar product, or it's equal to F D cosine theta. Now we know that F will be simply equal to Q E. So that means it's along the same direction, the same direction as the uh, electrostatic field. And D, he told me it's this way. So that means the angle theta between these two guys is equal to 90 degrees. And if you remember, cosine 90 is equal to zero. So in this case, the work done by uh, the electrostatic, produ uh, the produced electrostatic force on the electron is equal to big fat zero. Okay, simply because of the definition. If you want more uh, elaboration on this, we can uh, discuss this in class when we, uh, when we meet next time. Okay, so that's question number six. Uh, question number seven. Question number seven, now I did not cover all, everything in class, but I think it's a good chance for us to go over these things now uh, together. Okay, we have a parallel plate capacitor. Okay, uh, let me just grab a piece of paper here, draw that. Okay, so I have a parallel plate capacitor uh, and uh, connected uh, by, uh, to a battery. While the capacitor is still connected uh, by maintaining a constant voltage, the plates are pulled apart uh, to devil their original distance. What is the ratio of the final energy uh, to the original energy stored in the capacitor? Okay, let me just quickly draw this. So I have a parallel plate capacitor and it's connected to uh, a voltage battery. So that's uh, simply you have a voltage here connected to it. So that means the voltage uh, along these two plates, once they are fully charged, it's constant, okay? Or connected to a constant voltage. Now, let me just uh, quickly pull out some of the definitions, which, uh, as I said, we'll cover them in class next time, but uh, you know them and they should, be, should not be uh, very difficult. Okay, so first of all, this, the energy stored in the parallel plate capacitor is defined as a half Q V. V is the voltage, not the speed. The capital V is the voltage, or equally, we can have it as uh, U equals to a half uh, Q is equal to uh, CV, so that means this has CV squared. C is the capacitance, something called the capacitance of the capacitor, which is again, we will discuss it uh, next time in more detail. This is epsilon A over D. This is the capacitance, which is uh, Arabi Sa. Okay, and it's purely geometric. It's defined on, uh, on the ge uh, geometry, uh, which is the, uh, A is the uh, area, the surface area of the place, and D is the separation between the plates. So this is the this is D, the separation between the plates, and the area is simply the area of uh, each plate if I have something like this, okay? So this will be the area A, okay? That's if I, if I draw it in two dimensions, okay? All right, so if I combine these guys together, so if I combine, uh, let's for example, this and this, okay? Then I get an equation for the uh, energy stored in the capacitor as a half 
Now C, I'm just going to put uh, epsilon uh, A over D, and then I'm going to multiply it by V squared. Okay. Now you notice that he, the uh, area of the plates is constant. V, he told me it's constant, and of, co of course these guys are constant. So let me just pull out the uh, constants out, and then I'm going to say that the then I'm going to say that the stored energy U is equal to some constant which is equal to a half epsilon a v square. All of these guys are constant and then they're multiplied by 1 over d which is going to be a variant. Now when, when, we pull, uh, when we pull the plates apart to do d then everything will be the same except let's call it this u2. Okay, epsilon a v square and then this will be 1 over 2d. Okay? Now he wants the ratio. So uh, he wants the ratio, what's the ratio of the uh, final energy? So this is, let, let me call this final energy. Okay? So if I want the ratio of final energy, let me switch the, to the red uh, one. Okay, so now the ratio will be U final divided by U, let's call this a U initial, is equal to, of course, these two guys, I'm just going to have epsilon AV squared divided by a half epsilon uh, not AV squared, these will cancel. And then I have 1 over D and 1 over 2D. When I work that out, it will be U final over U initial will be equal to 2D divided by D. Just now. And the Ds will cancel and then U final will be equal twice U initial. And that's what you want to show. Okay. So that the amount of energy stored in the capacitor when you pull the plates apart by a distance that is equal to uh, double the distance, then the uh, energy stored will be uh, double the uh, initial energy. Okay, that's it. Okay, so now let's move on to question number seven. Okay, again, question number seven is something that we did not cover yet, but it's easy once you I show you the uh, formula. Okay, uh, now we're saying that a pair of parallel plate capacitor uh, are connected to a battery while the capacitor is still connected to the battery. Uh, oh, this is we, we've done, we've just done that. Okay, sorry about that. Sorry. Uh, okay, now, uh, okay. Question number eight. Question number eight is a little bit long, but it really is uh, very, uh, uh, it's very easy to understand. Uh, we have something called the Millikan uh, experiment. Who uh, won uh, the the guy won Nobel Prize uh, for this experiment, uh, and we wanted to analyze some of the things that uh, he discovered. Okay, now let me very quickly show you what we have uh, what we have here. Okay. So uh, we have a parallel plate capacitor. Okay, a parallel plate capacitor like this, and it's connected to uh, constant voltage. Okay, just like what we had before. So this is constant voltage uh, somewhere here. So it's not going to change. V is uh, constant. And then we produce here, of course, once you do that, you produce some electric field. Okay, so electric field uh, is uh, when, what is the direction? And directed upwards. So the directed upwards. Does the electric field is directed upwards like this. Okay, that means I have to make sure that I get my polarity correct but don't worry about that we're not we're not worried about that so this is my electric field okay and it has a magnitude equal to that remember I, I tried to draw these guys are equally spaced to in, include uh, indicate that they are uh, or the electric field is uniform and the mass he told me the mass of the drop uh, equal to that and it remains suspended so that means he dropped this oil drop okay which has some mass and right? and uh, at some point because of its, uh, because of the effect of two forces, uh, the gravitational force will be pulling it down, and the electrostatic force will be pulling it, uh, pulling up. Okay, so if this is uh, now remember, if this is positive, positive, this must be the positive plate, and this is the negative plate. Okay, so um, so anyway, so he told us that the electrostatic force is up and the uh, gravitational force is down. And let me just so that uh, now we, we wanted to take this question from uh, that to something that we took on physics one. So what we have, we have a mass here. He told us what that mass is equal to 3.27 uh, times 10 to the power minus 16. And then we have two forces acting on it, if electrostatic force and if G. 
The first thing he wants to talk, uh, ask us, and remember, remain suspended means what? Means that the sum of the forces along the y-axis are equal to zero. That's what the word remain suspended means. Okay, it means that the sum of the forces acting on the uh, charge along the y-axis is equal to zero. First of all, he wants to find Fg. Fg from first year is equal to m multiplied by g. G is 9.8 uh, meter per second, 9.81 meter per second square. Uh, find the, uh, if the electric field is downward, uh, okay, now he's telling us the electric field, oh, sorry, electric field is downward, I, I drew that upward, so sorry, the electric field is downward, so my polarity is correct. Okay, so the electric field is the direction of the electric field all downward, sorry, sorry for that. Okay, so the electric field is downward, and then that means the, the force is up, with the electrostatic is up for us. Explain why. Well, the reason for that because uh, he told us, well, he didn't tell us what the charge is, but since they are suspended, I mean, the best or the easiest uh, explanation for that, since he told us it's suspended, and if G is down, then Fe must be up uh, words so that it balances the Fg, and then the sum of the force is equal to zero. So that's just why uh, it is. Uh, what is the magnitude of the charge on the oil drop? That's very easy, because remember, I said Fg is equal to Fe. That's the suspension here, because if G is down negative, so it's just like you're saying Fe minus Fg is equal to zero. And then you take this the other side, and then you get Fe is, um, uh, is equal to Mg. And this is equal to Mg, and this, if you remember, it's equal to Q multiplied by E. Okay, Q is the charge of the drop, right? And E is the electric field, which he told us. At the electric field, he told us what that is, and this is along y, so we don't have to do this, right? We don't have to do that as a way. So my q will be equal, will be simply equal to mg divided by uh, e, okay? And that's my charge. All right. Now, okay, what else? Uh, uh, so this is c. Uh, d. If the magnitude, if the distance between the uh, plates is equal to that much. What's the potential difference between the plates? Well, that's, again, that's something we did not uh, talk about yet, but it's uh, next class we will show that the potential difference V is nothing more than ED, okay? So, uh, so that means if I want, uh, what does he want, what's if the distance is equal to, then I know E, and he gave me the distance, so I can calculate that uh, directly. Uh, by what factor now this is question number E. By what factor would the electric field, electric force on the oil drop change due to the following uh, conditions? Uh, doubling the distance, okay, he wants the electric force. Remember the electric force E is equal to, uh, QE is equal to F, okay? I want E, right? So that means E is equal to F divided by Q. Okay, so V will be equal to F divided by Q multiplied by D. Now let, let us look, look at the conditions. Okay, so uh, what by factor of the electric force on the oil drop change due to the force. So F, uh, electrostatic force on the drop will be equal to Q V divided by T. Okay, just transforming this so that we look at the uh, electrostatic force rather than that. Okay, doubling the distance, as you can see, if you double the distance, this is reduced by, uh, reduced to half. Doubling the charge, if you double the charge, this will be uh, increased, or at least it will be doubled. That's it, okay? Now, the last question, uh, there is a very similar uh, question uh, to it in the uh, notes, and I'd like you to take a, sort of, consider this as a challenge question and uh, do it on, on your own, and then we'll, if you have any questions, you can ask me uh, next class, inshallah. Okay, Zakum Allah khair, and thank you very much. See you in next uh, tutorial, and next class.